and welcome to April's Road CC Recommend Show. I'm Rebecca Charlton and alongside me on the sofa today is Liam Cahill. Well, we're quite comfy today. Oh, we finally got the sofa in. I am so much more comfortable like this. Now, every month we test a lot of good stuff on Road CC and instead of saving all of that good stuff for a big award ceremony at the end of the year, like we usually do, uh, we thought it'd be much more useful to tell you about the stuff as soon as we review it. That's the idea behind Road CC Recommends. It's a curated list of the best bikes and products that we've reviewed. Every month we'll add great new stuff too, and we'll tell you about it on this show. Does that mean we can crack open the shampers every week, every couple of days? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fine, just checking. Uh, coming up on today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the products that made the grade through March. We'll be looking at gravel tyres in a bit more depth, and we'll also be picking our product of the month. As well as all that, there's a recommended route and a recommended cafe stop as well. But enough of the waffle and the intros, let's dive into some great products. <laughs> Right then, first up this month is uh, this. I've got it here, actually. It's um, Muckoff's Stealth Tubeless Puncture Plug Kit. Now, it's quite a name. Becca, well have, you, <laughs> have you ever punctured a tubeless tyre? I have not, and that's because I don't tend to ride them. I'll be honest, I'm still on uh, good old-fashioned dinner tubes. That may be completely against all innovation, but you are quite lucky. Sorry. Um, <laughs> puncturing a tubeless tyre is a bit of a faff, to be honest. Um, well, it is if you haven't got one of these kits. Um, usually, I'm waiting at the roadside for a rescue. Really? Yeah. You can't find a solution? I just can't be, but, well, most of the time I've forgotten my tyre boot. Um, mm. I might not have an inner tube, might not even have a pump. So, yeah, but you can you do know. a makeshift boot. Uh, yeah, but then I haven't got a fiver because we're all contactless these days. That is yeah. true, never have I'll, I'll always phone a friend in that situation. Who'd you call? Probably my dad. <laughs> How does he feel about that? Well, he's in France, so it's quite a drive, but you know. <laughs> Dave is keen, you know. Um, anyway, back to this, <laughs> 30 pounds. Um, it is a bit more expensive than um, most other kits, but you do get a serrated knife, a reamer, and an insertion tool, three sizes of plugs, um, and five in each size. Uh, you get three pairs of rubber bungs, the bars and uh, kind of the end cap, that's the word I'm looking for. The end caps that it comes in, yeah. they're CNC machined aluminium as well. So it actually looks really, really nice. And they're secure while you're riding along. Yeah, it's a really handy bit, bit of kit. Yeah. Do you think um, do you think one of these would convert you to tubers? Yep. Done. I'm converted. Next up are the Pearl Azumi Women's Attack Capri bib tights, which are eco-friendly, using recycled polyester yarns for the bulk of their construction. And performance-wise, these are absolutely excellent. The thin fabric is supportive and freeing at the same time, uh, while the easy P design is incredibly handy. You just need a little patience to arrange the straps to sit comfortably before you set off again. That's be not a problem for you, is no, it? No, I, I don't find that a problem. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, Becca. But I love a quality pair of tights on those colder winter rides. Yeah, you can't beat them for comfort. Um, these are actually designed for spring and autumn rides, so there's no fleece lining, and they're a three-quarter length design. Oh, so I love when you get back from a spring ride with that muddy kind of shin section just there. I think that's a sign of a really good day Do out. You really? Yeah, you can think, oh, I've got a tan, and then it just washes off. <laughs> Now, trying to stop that mud is the SKS Chromoplastics Mud Guard set in a new 65mm width. This will be a familiar set of guards to many riders and they perform faultlessly, significantly reducing the amount of muck and road splatter that would otherwise end up on both you and your bike. The front mud guard comes away with uh, SKS's breakaway fittings. They're designed to release the mudguard if something gets jammed between it and the tyre. They're also quiet, which, Becca, I would say that's my number one priority for riding with mudguards. They've got to be silent. 
Yeah, so many politics, isn't there, with mug guards? It's yeah. so annoying when someone's mug guards are rattling through the whole ride. I can't stand it. Now, the final product, before we take a look at a bit of buying advice, is the Oxford Aqua V32 double pannier bag. Like the SKS mug guards, these panniers are designed to be tough and reliable. The two 16 litre bags are made from a durable waterproof fabric with a roll top closure, and each has a zipped compartment on the outside as well as reflective accents. The rear of each bag section is stiffened and there's a toughened bumper as well at the bottom. Uh, they're a touch on the heavy side, but these are a great, great option for commuters and riders that will go out in anything. Not always me so much these days. <laughs> bit more fair weather <laughs> yeah me too now it's time for some buying advice and we're taking inspiration from one of this month's recommended products the 38 millimeter vittoria terreno zero tlr g 2.0 gravel tire glad you had to say that one. Uh, this is a tubeless <laughs> tire that's easy to set up and once you're out the door you'll be rather speedy thanks to the slick tread let's head over to anna from the tech team to talk us through the things to look out for with gravel tyres, you want something that combines off-road grip and cushioning with a tread that rolls quickly on the tarmac. I've got the Vittoria Terreno Zero TLR G2.0 tyre with me now, which is the slickest in Vittoria's gravel range. I'm going to run through some important points to look for in a gravel tyre destined for dusty dirt roads and tarmac surfaces and how the Vittorias hit each spot on. If you're riding in dry conditions, on surfaces with lots of loose small rocks, you'll be wanting a tyre with more of a file tread pattern and medium space knobs. Tall knobs aren't necessary because you're not going to be digging into any mud, but you still need some kind of tread for some traction in the loose shingle. The tread pattern on the Terreno Zero, on the other hand, has a completely slick centre tread, making it best suited to hard packed surfaces. There are slightly angled hexagonal knobs on the sides here, as you can see. This pattern minimises resistance in the rolling direction, yet provides dependable bite when loaded in the corners. Now these aren't the fastest tread-free gravel tyres, but they're not that slow either. The plus side to this is that they're incredibly robust and can romp over packed gravel paths and perform a lot better than you might expect over rougher surfaces. Mechanical grip from the tyre's tread only increases traction when the tyre can actually dig into the surface. On rocks, tarmac, hard baked earth, grip is determined by the tackiness of the compound. These tyres use Victoria's graphene compound, which is said to allow for the natural barriers of rubber to be removed, so there's no compromise between speed, grip, durability and puncture resistance. The Terreno Zero also features a 120 threads per inch construction. Vittoria admits this adds weight to the tyre, but it also massively helps improve strength and resistance. Tyre pressure is an incredibly important part of getting the most out of your gravel tyres. For optimal grip, comfort and control, which all translates into speed, you'll be wanting the lowest pressures you can get away with before you start hitting your rims as you go over tree roots or hit potholes. The wider the tyre, the lower the pressure you can get away with. While you can put a tube in the Terreno Zeros, gravel tyres, and these included, really do prefer to be set up tubeless. The benefits are you can run lower pressures without running the risk of getting a puncture from bottoming out your rims and pinching the tube. Also, if a flint does manage to poke its way through, the sealant usually does a good job at sealing it. Even after some abuse on some proper off-road sections, these tyres fared really well and proved to have excellent puncture resistance. Okay, time for a bit of a change of pace now. Uh, with the weather changing for the better and lockdown restrictions gradually being lifted, there's going to be more and more opportunity to actually go outside and ride with friends. Won't that be nice? Bye. And most importantly, eat cake. So let's see where we're headed this month. Hi, welcome to the Forge Cafe in Ringmer. This is all of our outside seating ready for post-COVID. 
Nice little bench area around the back for cyclists, for bikers, car park available for you all. We serve breakfast, lunch, dinner, sweet treats and obviously really beautiful coffee. You're welcome anytime. Look forward to seeing you. On the edge of the village of Ringmer, just outside of Brighton, the Forge Coffee Lounge has been a popular spot for cyclists since it opened. The Forge offers a lovely mix of coffees and teas and accompanies this with a mouth-watering array of cakes, pastries and light lunches that are perfect for the mid-ride snack and are, to be honest, making me rather peckish. If you're in the area, the cafe is a great place to get a caffeine hit before you attempt the Ditchling Beacon Strava segment. But good luck beating Lars Petter Norcard's time up the one and a half kilometre climb that averages 8%. Will you be stopping by? Let us know in the comments. If we pick your choice and it's featured here on the show, then we'll chuck your favourite cafe some cash to put behind the till for you next time. So your next cake stop will be on us. That's quite a good little incentive, mm, Becca. Yeah. To be honest, I don't know about you, but takeaway coffee and cakes, just not really the same, is it? I am waiting so very patiently to be allowed back in the cafe. We are gonna just appreciate it oh, so, so much. Especially cold days, sitting outside, just not the same. I know, and it has uh, got a little bit too it's cold again too this chilly, week. Well, chilly. hopefully it's on the up. And for now, let's get on with the recommended product, shall we? I'll kick us off with the Villa Falante SLR 2021, a stunning road bike to both look at and, importantly, ride. Um, now, this is a lightweight aero road bike that offers a reactive performance, quick handling, and a surprisingly comfy ride, actually. The Falante's acceleration is impressive. When you're trying to put some daylight between you and the rest of the bunch, you're rewarded with easy speed when you flick the pedals. If someone tries to get the jump on you, they better have planned it well because the Falante is well up for getting on their wheel in an instant. As well as being light, the Falante feels properly stiff. Launch your biggest out of the saddle attack and it remains tight and rigid around the bottom bracket while the fork and stocky head tube keep everything firmly under control up front. Fast cornering feels fabulous and the quick handling allows you to chop and change your line with the minimum of effort. If you're lucky enough to be in the market for a race focused superbike, the Falante is right up there mixing it with the very best from the big name brands and it should be on your shortlist we think. I have to say I wish I could buy that bike. If you are planning on converting your double chain set to a single setup or simply replacing your worn out one by chain ring, the uh, Wolf Tooth Components Drop Stop B is a great option. It has worked flawlessly for thousands of miles during our testing with no drop chain and it's quiet too. Drop Stop B is a uh, new design that is meant to work with SRAM's flat top chain. We found that to be the case. Um, away from SRAM, you can also run this chain ring with any 9, 10, 11 or 12 speed chain. I mean, what can we say, Becca? It just keeps your chain on, really. That's all it does. Well, that's good. Pleasing it's the name. kind of what you want, mm, isn't it? It is, yeah. what you, it is definitely what you want. Um, anyway, for now on to the Oro Terra CGRX800. Oro has taken its highly capable gravel bike and given it a new clean look with new internal cable routing. Uh, the great thing is that Oro hasn't touched the fun handling and balance of comfort versus performance that made its predecessor so, so enjoyable. The main point of this bike is the handling, which feels really balanced and poor. Oro having just got the speed of the steering to be entertaining enough without becoming a challenge or tiring when really going for it on a loose surface. Becca, I guess that's the main point of a gravel bike. You kind of want it to be balancing that kind of fun, slightly out of control feel with enough composure to get you out of a tricky spot. <laughs> You're just slightly out of control, mm. not, not completely. <laughs> Um, and this is what we found the Oro to provide, actually. I think you'll agree, Liam. The 2021 model with this integrated front end looks really clean. Yes, absolutely. Um, they're not the most sensible feature, but I do love an integrated front end. Uh, there, there are some sensible features with this bike. The bike is capable of taking a one by or a two by setup, has space for 42 millimeter tires. It has rack and guard mounts, drillings for three bottle cages. Mm -hmm and it comes in a selection of builds to kind of suit different budgets. Another product, Oro's not done, <laughs> another product to make the grade this uh, month is the Pyro Line Aqua Zero Bib Tights. They are absolutely crushing it this month uh, with a comfortable pad, high zipped front end that gives extra coverage, a great on the bike cut and reflective detailing that is well positioned and subtle. These are brilliant bib tights at 
a great price. Sticking a brand new pair of tights on before an 100 kilometer ride across road and gravel isn't the most sensible idea, I must say, but the shiny new kit box can get the better of any cyclist, and it certainly did with Stu, but luckily yeah. turned out to be a good choice. So inside the tights is a SciTech Endurance 2.5 HD pad which is instantly comfortable. The close fit doesn't feel restrictive and there's no bunching up of material behind the knees to cause any discomfort. The blizzard fabric is good, down to around the minus five mark, and you also get decent rain protection too. Yeah, well that sounds ideal in the depths of winter and all for a penny under a hundred quid. Hey, that's not bad. Now, we've got our product of the month coming up, but before we get to that, we've got one final product to show you. The Dex Shell Ultra Thin Children's Socks are brilliant for little feet that like riding through the rain. I'm gonna go there, Liam. Perfect for your feet. <laughs> yeah, neither of us can make that joke. Thank you very much. We've got no, we tiny cannot. feet on this sofa. <laughs> well, these socks use a synthetic blend of materials that gives some flex, warmth, and robustness. And sandwiched between the layers is the Perel membrane, the bit that gives the windproof and waterproof performance. Out on the trail, our tester reported they were good for stream crossings, puddles, and really heavy rain. They have enough length to form a decent overlap with waterproof trousers, while the fairly low bulk helps keep toes wiggling and shoes still fitting okay, though they are a little more snug than regular socks. It is worth mentioning that these are hard wearing too so if you're getting changed in a car park you're gonna be okay perfect right on to the big one product of the month each month we're going to award a product of the month this will be something that we really think stands out now becca can you do the honors i certainly can but first so for drum roll please <laughs> a little round of virtual applause now couple of us here in the studio to the craft active extreme x round neck long sleeve women's base layer Woohoo! Woo! Uh, over to matt to tell us all about it the craft women's active extreme round neck long sleeve base layer might be a bit of a mouthful but it's an outstanding bit of kit it will keep you warm and comfortable in mild to cold weather and it puts in an exceptional all-round performance. Kraft has been making base layers that lead the way for years. The Active Extreme range, which includes both women's and men's cuts, is 40% sequel polyester these days. That means it contains upcycled plastic marine litter along with other recycled plastics. With Coolmax added into the mix, it feels and performs like it always has, and this is what sets Kraft base layers apart. They're mega soft, silky smooth, and have loads of stretch. So they accommodate all body shapes, sitting close to your skin without any restriction or tightness of any kind. All of the seams are flat lock stitched, so you don't even feel them in use. An active extreme base layer will keep you warm when it's cold, even when it's really cold. Kraft gives a temperature rating of minus five degrees centigrade up to 10 degrees centigrade for this base layer. We tested it in three degrees up to 12 this time around, but we've ridden similar base layers in sub-zero temperatures a million times, and they always keep you perfectly warm and comfortable. You certainly get enough versatility here for a UK winter, uh, along with most of the autumn and spring as well. The shape of the fibers and the waffle knit shift moisture away from your skin really well to keep you dry when you're working hard in the saddle and mesh panels under the arms provide loads of ventilation. The real magic is this. Even if you get this base layer sweaty on a climb, and you will occasionally, it never feels especially cold. It might feel a bit damp, but it remains warm, and that's absolutely fine because you'll stay comfortable. That's why I have a whole bunch of these that I use for six months of the year. All things considered, Kraft's Active Extreme base layers are about the best out there for the off season. And that's why they're so massively and enduringly popular with both pros and with the rest of us. If you've never tried one out, maybe it's about time you did. Thank you very much, Matt. Really, Becca, what I want from uh, a base layer in those cold temperatures is a nice cosy hug. And that just, Aww. it just makes getting out the door a little bit easier. It does, and no hugs for you today, sorry. Not legally that's allowed anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, it, I, I think the weather was looking really good. Yeah. I had the gloves off, then they were yeah. back on. It's just so yeah. consistent. And they really are on. I'm back actually to put in my base layer and heart rate monitor. Ooh on the radiator the night before a ride because that really especially a 
Base layer, I can handle. Mm -hmm. Cold heart rate nope. monitor, absolutely not. No, can't no way. do it. Can't do it. And and you do that pathetic little like. <sighs> yeah. No. No. Still Too cold. Are you into <laughs> bib shorts on the radiator the As night before? Everything on the radiator. Yeah, yeah, when it's absolutely. been as cold as it has Jacket. been this spring. <laughs> yeah, spring is not living up to spring mm. temperatures. It snowed up. the other day here. <laughs> Well, we it had a heat wave snowed. and then it snowed. Not happy. Anyway, anyway, it is going to pick up, I'm sure. Summer will be here soon. But before we sign off, there's just time to share our route of the month. Each month, we'll be picking a great route from somewhere around the UK. So this week, that somewhere is Wales. And it's a route that is part of Road CC's favourite rides collection on Kamut. Uh, there's a link to those routes popping up now and it's in the description below as well. Matt Page is responsible for this one. Don't come blaming me. He's a 24 hour mountain bike racing champion and a bit of an animal. So uh, it's not for the faint hearted this one. Uh, over to Matt in Wales to tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Matt from Offroad CC and today I'm gonna show you the route which I've called the Welsh 160. So it's a, it's a really challenging, but also incredibly scenic ride it's here in mid Wales and southwest Wales, taking in some pretty tough climbs, but also got some fantastic views along the way. The route starts from the market town of Llandavri in Carmarthenshire, with the first challenge coming after just 12 kilometres with a climb up onto Money Vepint. The climb is quite unique because it is a single track, double carriageway. Uh, it's quite sharp, quite steep in places, once you're at the top, you're rewarded with fantastic views and also a really silky smooth road surface. It is a military road, although it's open all year round, uh, but there's a good chance that you'll see troops, maybe some firing going on, so something to be aware of. Also, keep an eye out for the German village as you start to descend. After descending off Munedepint, the next really scenic section comes as you ride up through the Irvon Valley, and this leads you directly up to Devil's Staircase. Now this is a climb that I'm sure many people will know of. It's just over a kilometre in distance, averaging 12%, but peaking at over 25%. The hardest bits come at the bottom, so pace yourself as you're going up, but it's a really rewarding climb. And there's some nice views. Now that they felled the trees, as you're climbing up, you can get a look back down the Irvon Valley. That is not the end of the climbing, by no means. There's some really scenic riding, but lots of more hills as you ride through the Cambrian Mountains and then descend to the village of Tregaron. After Tregaron, you've got a long flat section. You've got about 20 to 30 k's of flat riding until you get to another village of Llanabother. Now from here, this is where the next big climb starts, up onto Mynydd Llanllwni. It's a lovely Welsh name. And from the top, you'll have some nice views going, looking down to Pembrokeshire, and you can see the sea on a, on a nice day. One final big climb will take you over to the village of Brechwa. And this is a really nice fast descent, really swooping bends. From the bottom, you've still got 50 kilometers left and 700 meters of climbing, but it's mostly rolling. And then one final challenge is Bethlehem Hill. It's quite short and sharp, peaking at 12%, but you'd like to be tired by this point, so it might be tricky and tough. And then the last 12 kilometers back to Llandavri are quite flat, and they're also very scenic, nice way to, to finish the ride. So that was my Welsh 160 route. Hopefully uh, it's inspired a few people to come to Wales and enjoy the amazing roads that we've got to ride here. Total distance, I've got 163 kilometers, so just over 160. Which, uh, also please those who use Imperial, it is over 100 miles. Uh, total climbing is 3,000 meters, literally just rolled over 3,000 meters now. So quite a tough route, but uh, incredible scenery, really rewarding and uh, absolutely fantastic roads, nice quiet roads. So yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, everyone else's route, see what people come up with. Uh, thanks for that, Matt. I think uh, that looks like a properly <laughs> epic ride. Yeah. It did, didn't it? Now, if you'd like to send us a route, then we'd love to hear from you, of course. All you need to do is plan that route on Kamut and invite us to it, or tag us in a ride that you've already done. There's a link popping up now that will take you to a page on Road CC that explains how to do it in much more detail. The link's in the description below too, and if we pick your route, you'll get a free year of Kamut Premium on us. Oh. 
Well, that just about wraps up our first proper Road CC Recommend show. We hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the products that have made our recommended list this month. If you want to check out the new Road CC Recommend site, then there's a link popping up now and it is also in the description below. Now, from those pages, you can also get through to the full reviews. We'll be back next month with a new batch of products. Um, and if you found this video useful, then give it a like, subscribe to see more from us and hit the bell icon to get notified when we post a new video. Liam, thank you. Oh, Thanks thank everyone you, for joining us and watching today and we hope to see you next time. Bye for now.